Good morning. Children's Church in here this morning? Yes or no? Oh boy, yes, y'all are here. All right. A 30-minute message just turned to a 15-minute devotion, and all the parents said, amen. So it's good to see you. Hey, when, when we get started this morning, we're going to start a, a new series. We're just calling it Committed by God. We're going to walk through Hebrews chapter 11, the first two-thirds of it anyway, and we're going to identify some people that God identified that he looked into their life, he looked into their faith and how they were living their life and said, I commend that person for how they're living because of how they displayed, how they walked out their faith, their relationship with God in a, in a very personal way. We're gonna ask ourselves, well, if God commended them in their life and looked into their life with a smile of his approval, then how can he look in your life? How can he look in my life and said, there's a life I, I, I approve of. There's a life I'd like to bless. There's a life I'd like to work through and do something that only I can do. And Ronnie Floyd tells us that God can do in a moment what. What, what we can do in a lifetime. And how can we have that kind of life? How can we have that kind of relationship with God? So today we're gonna to look at a story named Cain and Abel. So we're gonna go from Hebrews chapter 11 each week. We're gonna to go to Hebrews chapter 11 and say there's somebody that's mentioned as a, as a person that was approved by God. And then we're gonna flip over to the Old Testament and say here's what he did in his life. Here's what she did in her life. And that's why God commended. So we're gonna learn some things there as well. So today we're in Hebrews chapter 11, verses one through four. It says, now faith is being sure. You may want to underline that word. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain. You may want to underline that line, that word. Being certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. You may want to underline that word. And by faith, we understand. You may want to underline that word. We understand the universe was formed at God's command so that what, was, what is seen was not made of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, or excuse me, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offering, and by faith, he still speaks even though he's dead. So just for a little summertime encouragement for you today, the very first person God puts in this list of faithful people is somebody that was murdered. Don't you want to be on that list? Isn't that encouraging? That maybe as if your own family member takes you out, God would look at your life and commend you for it. But in reality, he looked at his life, he looked at the life of Abel and saw some things long before he gave his life, but some things that he could bless and he could anoint and he could work through. First of all, let's understand what faith is. Let's understand how that's defined. One of the ways is just is being sure. That word being sure just means to stand under, to support. That your faith in your life is something you have confidence in, that you can stand under, that you can support it. It's, it's something that gives you stability. It's something that gives you strength in your life. Faith is being sure, being sure of what we hope for. And it's not we hope it rains this afternoon. We hope the sun comes out on Monday. It's something more than that. It's being sure of that. It's, it's, it's having, secondly, a, a cert, certainty about it, having a conviction about it, something you can base your life on, something you can sustain you in your life and you can be confident in that in your life and have a conviction there. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is not believing that God can, it's knowing that God will, Bill, Ben Stein said. And faith brings about some substance, it brings about a foundation. And it's something we're commended for, it's something we obtain a good report from because of how we live our life based on the faith that we have in God, something that gives us support and strength and stability in our life. It's a conviction in our life. It's something we're commended for. It's something that gives us a perception. A perception, a strong perception is what the saints were commended for. It's what we, gives us an understanding in our life. Verses three and four says, by faith we understand that the universe was formed from God's command so that what was seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offering, and by faith he still speaks, even though he's dead. This morning, can we quickly look at that story and identify maybe some things that we could look in our life and say, am I being faithful in that area of my life? Does God look into my life and he give a smile of his approval in this area? 
of how I live my life and the convictions that I live, the strength that I have, the ability to be faithful in those situations and circumstances. First of all, in your work, in your work and what, whatever you do. In the first service, there's people in there that we don't like because every day's a Saturday. But even in there, that's their work. In your summertime students, when you go back to school, in a sense, that's your work. For those of us that go to the office tomorrow, for moms that are raising children, that's your work. Are you being faithful in that work that God's called you to do? Adam lay with his wife Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to her brother Abel. Now Abel kept the flocks and Cain worked the soil. Abel was a shepherd. Cain was a farmer. And they were faithful, and we'll see more in just a few minutes, they were faithful in doing what they did. Your work can be a ministry that you're about. Your work can be your job. Your work can be in any number of things that God's called you to do and placed you here to do. But we ask ourselves, I'm going to be in first. When God looks at how you do what you do, whatever that is, does it have the smile of his approval? Of how you handle yourself at work? How you respond to difficult situations at work? how faithful you are at work. I'll never forget early in my ministry, I went blowing into a church parking lot, jumped out of my truck, ran into a church office, and there was a pastor in there with his feet kicked up on his, on his desk. And I said, hey, how you doing? I can, I can visualize it like it yesterday. He said, I'm good. I said, what you up to today? He said, just waiting on five o'clock. And I thought, you gotta be kidding me. My real thought was there's people dying and going to hell and you waiting on five o'clock. How can that be? How can we do what God's asked us to do? Whatever that is, whatever area of that in your life, whatever phase of life you're in, whether you're a shepherd or a farmer, and are you doing it in such a way that pleases the Lord? The ministry that you're involved here in at church, are you doing it in a way that pleases the Lord? Are you all in in what you're doing? Are you being faithful to that? You know, several months ago, we entered into a partnership with Hope Community Church. If you've lived in Birmingham most of your life, you remember it as McElwain Baptist Church. We're helping them financially. We're helping them with strong prayer emphasis. We're helping them with special events. We're helping them with boots on the ground and special events. But it may be an opportunity for some of you to go and to serve as a missionary at Hope Community Church for, for at least a year maybe three years. God may call you there permanently. He certainly has that right. But it's an opportunity for us to put boots on the ground and help Hope Community Church turn the corner and become, a, again, a strong, vibrant church. They've got great leadership there, a great passion for the core members there that want God to do something incredible. They just need some help. So God may call some of you to say, you know what, I, my ministry here is something I've been doing. God may want my ministry to go somewhere else for a season. And I'm willing to do that. I want, to, I want you to watch this video as we think about being faithful in our ministry. I want you to watch this video and see if maybe this is something God wants you to be a part of. Let's watch this together. Who'd ever heard of a church being adopted? We've heard of merging with churches and I'd never heard of adoption. I was on the vision team that we decided to do all this stuff and they brought Jacob over and Suzanne and my first thought these are children. I mean, they're not either one old enough to do anything. Yeah, I just felt like he looked like a child to me. He still does. This shouldn't be going as well as it's going. If you just described it in a vacuum without all the people here, it's like, hey, a church, 125 years old, a bunch of senior adults are gonna have a pastor that looks like this, like he just graduated college yesterday, and they're just gonna commit to him and say, yeah, let's just keep going. It, it shouldn't be working that well. Now I say he's the best thing that's happened to this church. We need families to come and be a part of what we're doing. If you do come, be prepared that Jacob will tell story and then at the end he will be very emotional. <laughs> Bring your baggage, like sit it down next to you and just know that like you're in good company. No, no, this, this is not fancy. There, there's nothing about this, fan. there's no cool tricks or gimmicks, but the thing that I like the most about that is like, when you say it, we mean it. Hope Community Church stands on the good news of Jesus. There is hope that when people are struggling, and frustrated, and 
anxious and don't know what's happening, they can have hope. Uh, and we're a place that reminds one another of that every single Sunday. Good morning, First Baptist. My name is Jacob Simmons, and I'm the pastor of Hope Community Church in East Birmingham. You've just seen a little video about our story of hope, and you know that Hope Community Church is a revitalization of the historic McElwain Baptist Church. We are in year four now, and God has been so faithfully blessing our church, growing us steadily and increasing His kingdom in East Birmingham. He has answered our prayers, and we are so thankful. And one of the many ways that He's answered our prayers is He's provided for us new church partners. We are so excited that you have agreed to partner with us, and we can't wait to see what God is going to do in His kingdom in East Birmingham. One of the ways this partnership is going to take place is I want to ask if you would begin praying about how the Lord might use you in this partnership. I want to tell you what we're praying for specifically. One, we are praying for youth and student ministry volunteers. We have about 10 to 12 students, middle school and high school, and though that's not an overwhelming number of students, uh, we do have the responsibility to disciple them. And so if you are interested, passionate, and skilled in student ministry, we would love for you to pray about coming and volunteering with us on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, midweek programming, whatever that may look like. Oh, we are excited about what God is gonna do there. Second, we have some needs in our worship and production ministry. We have a great team that leads every Sunday morning, but we would love to have more voices and more instruments. And in particular, those who are skilled in production ministry, whether it's lyrics, lights, online streaming, audio, we would love to have some more volunteers there. And that may be something that you are skilled in. And lastly, uh, you may want to stay here in regular weekly worship at First Baptist, but we also have a need on Wednesday nights with our children and family ministry. We run a program called Cornerstone from 6 to 7.30 every Wednesday night, and we need some more volunteers. So maybe you have a passion and interest in students, but want to keep your membership here. We would love to help you uh, get connected in doing that. If you are interested in being part of any of these, I know that there's gonna be a church interest meeting in a couple weeks. We would love for you to join that meeting. We're also praying for you and praying about what God is doing in East Birmingham through Hope Community Church. I gave Jacob a list of people and said, here's the people I want you to take to your church because I'm tired of fooling with them at this church. And um, he, he said, no, I don't want those. And I said, I don't want you to have those. But uh, I do want you to pray and see what God would have you do. Uh, if we could get a handful of folks from here to go help them for a season, it would be a, a great commissioning and a great opportunity for you to serve. But sure enough, if you're not happy here and if you're grumpy here, just stay here, okay? We can handle it. And then we want to send the cream of the crop over there and to bless them and to help that church get, get turned around and You've heard it said years ago that it takes 14 miles to turn an oil tanker around and the church is a lot bigger than an oil tanker. So it just takes a time and a lot of hard work, but God may be calling some of you to be a part of that and we'll have an information meeting on the June 23rd. Um, and there's an opportunity for you to, to sign up on that QR code or to um, indicate, just, just write Hope Community Church on that tear off and put it in the receptacles as you leave. And, we'll be in touch with you. So it's just an opportunity to, to say, you know what, this is what God's called me to do and I want to be faithful in it and I want to honor the Lord so that God looks at my life and say, man, you gave it up. You gave up with your comfort zone and you went to Hope Community or you gave it to your comfort zone and you shared Christ with a family member. You gave it to your comfort zone and you forgave somebody that didn't ask for your forgiveness and you, 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 God looked at that and he commended you just simply by your, by your work, but also by your, by your worship. Also by your worship, it says, in the course of time, Cain brought the fruits of the soil to an, as an offering to the Lord. Cain brought the fruit of his soil, the crops that he had raised, he brought them as a sacrifice, as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought the fat portion from some of the firstborn of his flock. This last week, uh, was on Wednesday, I was at Rodney Scott's barbecue. There's some church members in there, as you might imagine, so we were badgering them and giving them a hard time. And we discovered something that was on their plate. The guy with us discovered something that was on their plate. It was called burnt ends. That looks good. The manager came around and we said, what exactly is burnt ends? I mean, you can only have so many ends to whatever. And he said, well, it's, it's fat bellies off a pig. And we marinate them and we cut them and we roast them and it was, now don't go there today, let's say, and I want some of those burnt ends only on Wednesdays. And don't forget your $5 coupon you got when you, went, when you came on Wednesday night, okay? 
Oh, wow, this is incredible. Because you look at Cain and Abel's offering as they were worshiping the Lord with their offering, and it says one brought the fruits of the soil. But then Abel brought the fat portion, the fat portion, the juicy part of, the, of, his, of his livestock. Brought the fat portion of the firstborn, the cream of the crop. He gave, his, he gave his very best as he worshiped. He laid it on the line as he worshiped. He offered God all that he had and the best of what he had. So this morning, just as we've been in corporate worship, have you, have you given God all that you've got? You know the name Lauren Daigle? A lot of you know that name. Had an opportunity through a series of events to go to a Lauren Daigle concert last night. Were any of y'all there? Only old buddy. Some of you were there? Just the cool people were there. I don't know if you know who Lauren Daigle is. She's kind of a, no, she's not. She's a Christian singer and kind of rolls over into pop some and that kind of thing. But when the concert was over, I thought, have mercy. That Cajun girl laid it on the line. She had to be tired. I don't know how many miles she ran during that concert and skipped and hopped and did all kinds of things, but she was all over the Coliseum, the arena, if you will. I thought that girl... Worshipped with everything that she had. She, she was, and you say, well, I don't really like worship. No, it's not, I'm not, it's, this isn't a debate. I'm telling you, she worshipped. She laid it on the line. She gave it all she had when she was finished with that evening. And I wonder if the Lord is pleased with, with Cain. Cain just brought the, first, the fruits of the soil, but Abel brought the fat portion of his firstborn and laid it before the Lord. And as you know, the, 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 the story goes on and Abel, God was pleased with this one offering and he wasn't pleased with the other offering. In Matthew chapter 15, verse eight, it says, the people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That word heart just means their actions are far from me. Now you may come in here and do what you're supposed to do, but their attitudes, their actions, their heart, their, their priorities, they're, they're far from what I'm desiring in their life. And I look at their worship and it's, I'm not commending them for that. I'm not pleased with it with that in their worship and how they do what they do. Warren Wiersbe says Cain wasn't rejected because of his offering, but his offering was rejected because of Cain, because of the attitudes, the priorities of his heart and of his life. Genesis chapter four, verses six and seven. I know students, some of you, I mean, you're young and you ought to be young. I'm glad you're young. I wish I knew what you know when I was your, your age. You're doing an incredible job. You're rocking it. There's a little weird phrase in here. In Genesis chapter four, verses six and seven, it says, then the Lord said to Cable, to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do, know, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if, you do what is, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. Isn't that an interesting phrase? That sin is crouching at your door. And see, I'm at the age that accolades and all that kind of stuff it left a long time ago. I just want to finish well. He said, well, you hadn't started well. Well, I know, we can debate that, and you're probably right. But I can have a heart and a passion to finish well. I want to finish well as a husband. I want to finish well as a dad. I want to finish well as a friend. I want to finish well as a colleague. I want to finish well as, as somebody that follows Christ and loves Christ and wants my life to align with his teachings. I just want to finish well. I've been on this journey long enough and I've been doing this long enough. I don't want to mess it up in the, in the fourth quarter. I just want to finish well. But there's that interesting terminology that sin is crouching at your door. Satan is just waiting for a crack in the armor, if you will, to pounce. Satan is waiting just for the right circumstances and the opportunities to come so that he can destroy all that we represent. It ought to worry us. 
It ought to worry us a little while, a, a, a little bit that Satan, the, the great deceiver, the father of lies is, is after us and desiring for us to believe that what used to be truth is now a lie, we think. Because sin is crouching at the door. So we ask ourselves, if sin is crouching at the door, how is, how is my life when, as it relates to my anger? That Cain dealt with that. Now Cain said to his brother, let's go out into the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and he, he killed him. He killed him. He said, do not be like Cain in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. Why did his brother, why did he murder him? because in his own actions were evil, but yet his brothers were righteous. Just in anger. The Bible tells us to, above all else, guard your heart, for it's the wellspring of life. It's the wellspring of life. Some of you are naturally nice people. You wake up in the morning, you're in a good mood. The rest of us don't like you. We get mad at people at red lights. We get mad at you on your telephone when you go 45 miles an hour down the interstate when you're texting, and then you go 80 when you're not texting. It drives us crazy. But don't you want to finish well? Instead of blowing your horn at the deacon next to you or your Sunday school teacher or losing your cool at the Walmart line, just anger that just wells up in us, the frustration in our life. Finish well. Why? Because sin is crouched. God would love, Satan would love to destroy your testimony by how the business decisions that you make. Sin is crouching at your door. Watch your anger in your life. Watch your lying in your life. God comes to Cain and says, where's your brother? Abel. He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeping? And the wrath that came, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, the ground that you, that you once farmed, which opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crop for you. You'll be a restless wanderer on the earth because you're a liar. And anger overcame you in your life. You lie on your test. You lie on your taxes. You lie on your business reports. You lie to your wife, to your husband, to your mom, to your dad. And sin is crouching at your door. Trying to destroy your life instead of God looking at your life and commending you for being a person of integrity and honesty. Sin is crouching at our door. And finally, because of your lostness. I'm not sure that's a word. I may have made that up. But it can be a word today, okay? Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today you're driving me from the land and I'll be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. Remember what God did? I don't understand all this. But God said, I'm going to put a mark on you. And that mark will be your protection that no one's going to harm you. And you will live as a wanderer in your life, in your lostness, away from the presence of God in your life. It ought to worry us. It ought to worry us that can we lose our salvation? I don't think we can theologically. Can we lose the presence of God in our life? Yes. And Satan can get a stronghold in your life and pull you away from the presence of God. And it ought to worry us. Abel was commended by God. He gave his life, but was commended by God. Cain lived a life of wandering out of the presence of God for the rest of his days. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your unending grace. We thank you that we can make mistakes and those mistakes are cleansed and forgiven and we're restored in our life. 
And Father, we pray that we would do just that, that we would find your grace and forgiveness. There's not a person in here that hadn't felt like Cain. Wow, we've blown it. Wow, we've messed up. But so many have found your grace and your love. Thank you for your restoration. Father, may we live in that today, knowing that our obedience today comes with your approval. May we learn the lessons of Cain. May we learn the lessons of Abel. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Do you stand today? You know, when you got your listening guide out, there's a little card stuck to it. Hopefully you've torn that off and gotten it out of the way. Don't throw it away. Keep that card in your Bible as you spend time with the Lord each day. Put it on the dash of your car, hopefully not on the miles per hour indicator. Put it somewhere on your refrigerator where you'll see it every day and pray for that person this week because they're going to Camp Ocoee. But while we're singing today and while we worship, you can pray for that individual today. Pray for them by name that God would do a work in their heart, do a work in their life. You respond as God leads you. Let's sing together.